Hello everyone, I'm the Mole Man and welcome to the Bakerloo line in Train Sim World 2. Oh yes, we're going to be driving the Bakerloo line and my goodness I'm excited to drive this. Look at this, we've got 72 stock absolutely everywhere. This is London Road Depot, but uh, our train is right on the edge all the way over here. This is our train. So we're going to get ourselves into the cab. Excellent. This is uh, this this is what it's all about. Look at this. Right, let's get the train set up. This is an interesting service. Very interesting. Let's get the train set up here and then I'll talk about it. Right. As you can see, it says stop at location Elephant and Castle Platform 4, which is currently in the other direction. So as far as I can tell, this service calls for us to go at 5 miles an hour, go into the tunnel, change ends underground and run into Elephant and Castle. Which should be very interesting. Should be very interesting. So we'll leave it not in service for now because uh, I haven't got any passengers on board yet. See the shard in the distance there? It's, uh, it's a spring morning, 5.41. We're just going to... Run on the Bakerloo line. It's going to be awesome. That's it. So we're cleared into the tunnels. Not going to get many external views whilst we're in the tunnels because that is not something that is possible. Because the tunnels are such a you know tight wall. There's no space for a camera to go on the outside. So that makes sense. Let's get a cab light on. Just so we can see what we're doing in here. And, yep, yeah, in we go. So this is going to start off with a uh, a downhill, which is going to be good fun. We've got to descend from essentially street level down to the deep level tunnels. And you can see the gradient starting to come in there. So managing your speed to start off with is the uh, interesting bit. Because we can accelerate now still. But eventually we'll have to start putting the brakes on. Yeah, you can see we're starting to speed up. The gradient's increasing. So we're just going to have to keep it keep it steady. Keep it steady down here so we don't speed like a maniac. I mean, there's no one in here apart from me, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, we want to abide by the rules, don't we? We want to abide by the rules. There's a 10 limit there, so we can now go up to 10. Because even though it says I'm speeding, the rules on the London Underground are... You can accelerate as you pass a board. So we can do 10 miles an hour from the board. That doesn't apply above ground though. When you're on the uh, network rail section, from Queen's Park to Harrow, that's network rail ruling, so you have to accelerate as you'd expect. But whilst on London Underground Territory, you can do it like this. So what I'm thinking is we're going to join the tunnel... We'll stop at a signal somewhere, change ends, and run into Elephant and Castle platform. It should be rather fun. And then run a service from Elephant and Castle to Harrow and Wheelstone, following that. That's it. Try and manage the speed. This is a very steep uh, downhill. But we should join up momentarily. It's the Bakerloo on itself. There we go. Some uh, buffers there as we join up here into another tunnel. Now the points to ch turn around are here. So we've got to get beyond this point, the rear of our train beyond this point, so we can actually turn around. So that's what we're going to try and do. I imagine stopping at the signal up here might be enough. We'll look at the map and find out. Just stop around about here and see if that's enough distance. No, it isn't. So we've got to keep going. So we'll go beyond this signal so we can get over the junction, turn around, and go back. I think that's what it's asking of us. So if we pull up to this uh, next signal here, we should be okay. It's kind of cool, because some of the services are straight runs out of London Road up to Harrow, I think. But this one involves you going into Elephant and Castle first. 
and there's there's quite a few little quirky things like that, sort of early early morning, late evening services here. Right, let's stop it there, and see if that's good enough. Have we cleared it? Yes, we have. And we've got the signal to go back in the other direction, so we're going to shut down this cab, which is going to be fun. So we uh, go into off, bring that into emergency, and then throw it into shut down. That's it. Key comes out. Instrument lights off. We'll turn the cab light off once we're done here. Control. So we've got the uh, control switch off and the control key out. And now we're going to turn this off. And it's going to be dark. So let's stand up. Turn the torch on so we can see what we're doing. And we're now going to walk through the train. So yeah, if you're on a keyboard, you can push L to get a... Uh, a torch, which is good under here because it's very dark. We wouldn't be able to do this otherwise. So we're just going to walk our way through the train. Of course, the saloon lights are off at the moment. Because the train is shut down. So uh, we've got no choice but to do this in the darkness. But it's okay. Let's make our way through. Close all the doors behind us. This is this is the cool one. This is the uh, the old cab because these were d these were ordered as four plus three units with the idea of running shorter trains in off peak, but they never did it. So there's this cab here that's just not used. It's really cool. I'm just gonna work our way through. It says Bay Clue line in there, which is awesome. Nearly that. That's it. So once we sat down, we won't need the uh, torch anymore. So we had to get some lights on again. I think this is the uh, last one. I think so. It's like some sort of horror game, isn't it? If you can you imagine, like looking down here, you, you just can't quite see the end of the carriage right now. It must be terrifying. But here we are, the other end. Excellent. So let's sit down. Right, let's get some lights on. There we go. Alright, that's better than nothing. Get the train set up again. Excellent. I think we're just good to go. Back in the direction towards Elephant and Castle. At which point we can... start the passenger service. Hopefully we're cleared through. We might not be. But we're currently wrong roading at the moment. We've still got to cross over. Which is kind of fun. Which we're going to do here. That's it. Crossing over. I believe this also presents a rare opportunity to go through a tube station without stopping. We're going to be going through Lambeth North here. But we're not in service. So we get to go through a station without stopping. Well, there aren't the rules. You have to go slowly through a closed station. Or one you're not stopping at. I think those are the rules. So we'll do this at 10 miles an hour. There we go. Sorry, we're not in service. I'm sure a train will be along eventually. There's one over on the other platform. Let's go slowly through here. I'm pretty sure that's the uh, London Underground practice. That's awesome. And back into the tunnel we go. Excellent. Alright, now speed back up. We get a brief bit of uh, speed from this. But it's not too much further to go until we get to Elephant and Castle. That'll do. I'll just coast it there. Twenty limit coming up in uh, three hundred and seventy odd yards. Currently twenty five limit zone, so we can get up to that. That's fine. That's it. I love the atmosphere of being underground like this. 
This is the sort of experience I've always wanted, but we've never quite got it until now. I just absolutely adore it. You can just see the light of Elephant and Castle in the distance there. Let's get closer and closer to that. There it is. Which platform are we going into? Platform 4. Is that the one on this side? I think it is. Yep, it's the one on this side. Nice. Welcome to Elephant and Castle. All these people waiting for us to, waiting for us to get here so they can... Uh, or the train, as you can see, we're due to actually depart here in like 13 minutes. So we don't... 12 minutes, let's just change to. So, uh... That's good fun, we've got plenty of time to turn around. We don't have to walk through the whole train this time, though. We've got a platform to walk down. Here we are. So that was the end of that service. Now it's a nice brief empty stock move into uh, Elephant and Castle there. What we can do now is just click continue, return to free roam, and now we've got just got control of the train again. So the service is scheduled to start 0603. So we're going to shut the train down now, walk to the other end, and then wait for clearance to start the next service. Instrument lights off. Uh, come on, where's the right bit? There's two there's two click spots on the same thing. That's it. Control key. Control key. There we go. Right, that's that done. All we're going to do now is set this ready to be our own wheelstone. There we go. I need to get the cab light off as well. Excellent. Right, that should be that. All set up. So we're just going to... Pop ourselves to the other end of the train. Yeah, you close, you close. So that says Harry and Wheelstone ready to go. Excellent. So that tail lights are on. Now we've got to navigate the masses. This is going to be good for. I love this detail. Northern Line, Elephant and Castle. Like you know, you've been I've been here. I've been on the Bakerloo Line, and it's it's just so cool. Excuse me. Thank you. Elephant and Castle. Look at that. So yeah, we've got 11 minutes till we depart. We're not going to sit here for 11 minutes. Don't you worry, we're just going to get ourselves to the other end. Get the train set up again and uh, get on our way. Also got a collectible up here. These screens are collectibles. If you see a broken screen, you can walk up to it and fix it, which is kind of cool. Also got the mirrors there. They're not the... Uh, they don't work perfectly. UE4's mirrors can be a bit hit and miss, but as you can see, it is sort of reflecting the station, which is cool. Let's uh, get on. Shut the door. I don't want to climb down. I want to shut the door. The click spot is so small. There we go. Whilst we're here, we can have a look around. Yes, the lights are still off, but we can still have a look around. We've got the uh, Bakerloo line there. I love the attention to detail gone into this. You can see where stickers have gone over it. So say if Paddington was closed or had a temporary notice, you can see it's been sort of stuck over. Which is kind of cool. Same with uh, Lambeth North. There's been stickers over these to show different information. Which is nice. I've got the old uh, passenger seats here, which is awesome. But anyway, let's get ourselves in here. Let's get set up. And let's wait for the time that we can depart. Yes, I want to act, uh, run this service. Thank you very much. Right, let's uh, do this again. So, control key, control switch. Direction selector. Into enter. Into enter. Into enter. There we go, that's, that's a mouthful. Get the train set up. And the valve release is actually this one here. Audible warning valve reset. It sounds like an air hiss. You wouldn't think it's a warning. It sounds like brakes, but it is actually that. Put it back into first break so we don't actually start rolling anywhere. That wouldn't be good. Instrument lights on. Uh, we'll get the saloon lights on now actually. So saloon and lighting heat and vent set. The lights are now on. We'll set this to say Harrow and Wheelstone. I think that is our train all set up. Let's just check the front, make sure it looks good. There 
Yes, it does. Got Harrow and Wheelstone, got our headlights on. Excellent. Well, in that case, then, I'll see you at 0603. The service has now started. It's time to open the doors. Excellent. We can check if they've opened by uh, using the drop light interlock. Let's cut that out. Open the window and use the external camera to look out. There we go. Go on, you can get on. Trust me, I'm not that bad a driver. You're, you're allowed to get on. Ah, you missed your chance. You missed your chance. Cut that back in. Shut the doors. And we are on our way. Excellent. Next stop, Lambeth North. Time for an all stops run. All the way to Harrow and Wheelstone. This is going to be good, this is. It's going to be good. It's now a crossing over. Let's get onto the correct side. I love the atmosphere. And it's one of those routes where as soon as you start getting getting the hang of it, you want to be able to drive it like this. Because this is the way to experience it. I mean, hell, even that is. If you want to, if you want a, a real proper challenge, but we'll keep this up for today so you can see what's going on. So yeah, as mentioned earlier, I'm going to be accelerating as we pass boards, not as the game says we can, because. That's the way I do things. That's the way I do things. So up to 25. That's it. Up to 25. Excellent. The only downside of doing that is it might mean the timetabling gets a little bit out. So if we end up having a wait at any stops, that, that's why. It's because I'm running ahead of it. Going faster than it thinks I should be, but I really don't mind that. It's just good. For, it's good fun all the same. But it is lovely in here. Here we are, Lambeth North. Hello, people. That's it. ourselves to a stop at the end of the platform here. Excellent. Doors open. Let everyone do their thing. And then the next stop will be Waterloo. Which is a nice station. It's got quite the curve to it. Oh yeah, we've got to wait. Okay, that's fun. See, it isn't a long wait. It's because I'm going a little bit faster than it's expecting, but that's okay. Shut the doors. And away we go. This has all got a 20 limit right in front of us. This is where we joined earlier. Coming back in. That's it. Yes, we, tur we turned around in uh, this section up here. We turned around in here. But we shall keep going this time. That we shall. Right, got the uh, acceleration shortly. There we go. And straight up to 30 as well. The way I'm doing it as well also means I'll get less points because I'll te be technically speeding. But I'm not in it for the points. And straight down for a 20 at the uh, start of the platform here. Because it's quite the uh, curve, as I said. This is Waterloo. Love all the adverts. Very characteristic of London, that. Here we are. the clock working up there as well, which is nice. And doors. Practically on time. Just, only, just a few seconds early, but when's that ever going to be a problem on the uh, on the Bakerloo line? 
people just want it to be fast. It's the underground. I love the experience of just gunning it and breaking and stuff. It's, it's a nice experience. Shut the doors. Excellent. Off we go again. Next stop is Embankment. Up to 25. Driver significantly over speed limit. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I want. You just shut up. <laughs> See, by the time you've reached the speed you're going at, the rear of your train's probably passed it anyway, so it's not a massive difference. There we go. Now, I believe that, yeah, this station's on a downhill. You can see it in the distance, but we're going downhill at the moment, so it makes the braking a little bit unexpected. If you come in here and you're not expecting to come in on a downhill... You tend to overshoot. It's always coming here easy. This is embankment. Here we are. Let's take it nice and easy. Got the monitors at the uh, end of the platform here. And open the doors. This is embankment. We just pop our head out and have a look. I love how every station is different on this line. It's it's really nice. It's really nice. Lock the doors. That we can do. That we can do. And off we go. Next stop, Charing Cross. A station is particularly on the Bakerloo line that I've been to a lot because back in the day when there was no southeastern high speed and there was no Thames link trains to London were went into Charing Cross it was the main way of getting to London and I'd get into London pull into Charing Cross and go straight down onto the Bakerloo line so it's quite historic for me really it's very no it's, you know it's nostalgic this look at this Charing Cross. See, even the relatively plain stations have got their own sort of look and flavour to them. Which is kind of cool. We're in a good place. Join us. Here we are. Charing Cross. It's Charing Cross and Marleybone, which I've been to lots on the Bakerloo line. Because there, there was always trips up to London... Charing Cross and then Bakerloo line to Marleybone and then up, up the Chiltern main line. I've done that lots. So this trip is very nostalgic for me and being able to do it and being able to drive it is just so good. Next stop is P Piccadilly Circus. Arguably one of the coolest stations on the entire line. You shall see why. If you don't know, you'll see why when we get there. Because the tunnel's so small and it's very claustrophobic, you always feel like you're going faster than you actually are. Like, it's 20 miles an hour, but you wouldn't really know about it. Got a 30 limit coming up eventually. It's the other side of Piccadilly Circus, though. And now we're climbing into Piccadilly Circus. Again, if you just coast it, you'll, you'll never make it because you'll come to a stop before you get there. And as I mentioned in the original video, this is using a sort of southern region style camshaft system. So you've got to play with the throttle in a unique way. Piccadilly Circus. Look at the colours. It's so cool. And look at how the platform extends into the tunnel. This is one of the cool things I like. It extends straight out. And this is one of the uh, unique things on the underground where doors open left I don't think we're going to be able to see 
but through there, let's have a quick look. You can see the other platform. It's over there. So from this side, you can watch trains on that side. It's so cool. Lock doors. Good to go. Next stop, Oxford Circus. There we go. We're off. So because it's first thing in the morning, chances of seeing another train go past here are very slim, but it does happen. It does happen. There are a few gaps, sort of crossovers, throughout these tunneled sections. So there is the occasional chance of seeing another train. Still maintain the 20 limit. Go up to 30 in about 100 yards. There it is. I've seen a lot of people say that they think that the, these tunnels are too dark. What you fail to realise is the underground is very dark. It is essentially pitch black down here. The only reason people seem to think it's brighter is because of cab ride videos. But cab ride videos are specifically recorded with extra bright lights, usually tor torches shone through the front of the train, so people can route learn it and see the stuff you wouldn't normally see. So, you know, these things have got old light bulbs. They did originally, there was a test to fit these things with newer bulbs, but the drivers didn't like it, so they put the old ones back in. You cannot see what you're doing in this, so... People saying the tunnels are too dark. They've got no idea how dark it really is down here. I mean, you can even tell when, you know, this is exactly what it looks like when you go to one of these stations. If you're on a curved platform and you get the chance to look down th the length of the platform and into the tunnel, just see how dark it is and how quickly a train going in there vanishes. It's, 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 it is pitch black in here. So, no headlights and the uh, cab light off. It would be... We'd only see the instruments and that would be it. That would be it. Right. That's that. Oh, I left it in forwards that time. Next stop, Regent's Park. It's so cool. I love this experience so much. See, even though this is like the shortest route that's been made for Trains in World to date, I mean, the Isle of Wight is going to be even shorter, but that doesn't bother me because the experience is more important than the length. So, even though this is only 14 miles, this is the sort of route I could drive again and again and again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Same will be true with, true, true with Isle of Wight. It's one of those routes you can just do back and forth. It's not, not to everyone's cup of tea, but for me, that is very much what I enjoy to do. Up to 30. We should get up to 35 at some point. It says it on there's 0 0.8 miles. There are a few stretches where we get up to 35. The fastest we'll go is 45, but that's above ground. That's 30. Just about see Regent's Park in the distance there. This bit's nice and flat, so it's okay. What's cool about these deep level tunnels is we're essentially following the streets of London right now. If you look at a map of the Bakerloo line versus the streets of London, you essentially follow the roads. So there'll be a road above us right now, so it's kind of cool that you're navigating London in that way. This is Regent's Park. There we are. Let's have a quick look, shall we? It's got the time. Just look at that. I love, I love the lighting. Just the atmosphere of the underground is great. It is. It does also terrify me. Like the concept of being underground and not knowing what direction is what. Like I'm so glad when you're on foot in here, you have a compass. Because if you didn't, I'd literally have no idea. But you know, sort of how I'm orientated and etc. I just, I don't do well underground in terms of. You know, 
orientation, awareness sort of stuff, but it is a very cool system. It is a very cool system. I do love riding on the Bakerloo line. Next stop is Baker Street. Probably one of the uh, most famous stations on the Bakerloo line. With some of the best artwork ever. Which we shall take a look at. That's it. See the signals going off into the distance there. One, two, three. It's like being at Heathrow and seeing aircraft lining up for landing. It's the signal after signal after signal. It's cool. Climbing a little bit. And here we are, Baker Street, where you can see we have got a Sherlock Holmes sort of signs everywhere or designs, which is cool. Too busy looking at that to stop properly. Don't really care. Let's take a quick look. We've got to take a quick look. Excuse me. The nearest one's over here. Yeah. I love it so much. I love it so much. The game is on. It's so cool. Alright, let's lock the doors. So I just open that into your feet. Sorry. Very bruised your knees. Oh well. It was worth it to see Baker Street. <laughs> and we're off. Go. Brakes are releasing. And go. There we go. I think I left more brakes on than I normally would, so it takes longer to release. But we're going straight into a 35 zone. So we can just gun it. Next stop is Marlebon. You see, that it's a station of uh, a lot of debate. This one. It's people say some people say Marylebone, some people say Marlebon or Marlebone. And I don't think anyone's correct because if you're on Chilton services, they tend to say uh, one, and if you're on Bakerloo line, they say the other one. So it's it's one of those things that it's an argument that's never going to be won. It really isn't. But nonetheless, we are here. That's it. Slow it on down. And you can see there the uh, signage there that says the... Sort of pays homage to the old station name. Great Central. Oh, I didn't want to push that button. I wanted to push that button. There we go. Great Central, which is what the station used to be called. Because it was the uh, Great Central Railway, wasn't it? That it was. Is that the next station I can see up there? Dunno. Straight into parallel. Go on. Who even needs to worry about that sort of stuff? Just all the power right now. That's it. Get back up to speed. I think that is a uh, Edgeware Road we can see ahead of us. That's cool. See the next station before we've even left the, the last one. It's weird when you get a sense of distance in these tunnels because usually stuff's just pitch black until you come around a corner and see everything at once. Here we are at Regent's Park. Oh, no, Edgeware Road. Why'd it say Regent's Park? Come on, brain. It literally says it everywhere. Stop! My brain just sort of went... Yeah, cause considering that stop, I think it's fair to say my brain just went... I think that's what my brain did then. <laughs> oh, well. Why did I say Regent's... Where even is Regent's Park? It's like we've already done Regent's Park, haven't we? Yes, we've already done Regent's... My brain just fried. Utterly fried. Oh, well. There we go. Next stop is Paddington. We're currently sort of heading west right now, and after Paddington, we'll do a sharp turn north. Northbound. It's good fun. 
Come on, train. Accelerate sometimes today would be nice. That's it. I probably had it in series and not realised. Just see we've got a 20 limit through uh, through Paddington. Not a uh, not a gentle station. Quite quite the the sharp uh, corner there. There's 30. You can see as part of the camshaft system, even though I've moved it down into what was essentially notch one, which was shunt, we were still accelerating because that's the way these, these trains, old trains work. So they're quite a unique uh, driving. Okay, I wasn't paying attention to that limit. Too busy talking about camshaft. That's it. That's it. Here we are at Paddington. Excellent. Ridiculous turning circle here. There's some nice uh, stuff on the walls, though. Again, just proves that every sort of station is unique. Let's take a quick look. It's here. I just love this. I just love the detail that's gone into these stations. It's cool. There's different versions of this all the way down, but we don't have time to have a look. That's it. Next stop, Warwick Avenue. Go, go, go! That's it. The brakes are still releasing slightly. That's why it takes a bit slow to get going, but it's okay. So I'll go back up to 35. Paddington to Warwick Avenue must be the largest gap between two stations at down here. It feels like it is anyway. But it's also one of the faster sections, so it doesn't take that it doesn't take that long really. Let's set ourselves up to 35. Double signal there. It's kind of cool. That'll do. Must be very hypnotic for for like newer drivers of this in real life, like getting used to the repeating pattern of the tunnel. It must take quite a bit of mental like mental work to get over it. Here we are at Warwick Avenue, where I was pushing the keyboard and I probably wasn't pushing it enough, so that's a bit not what we were looking for, but how did we do? How did we do? Oh, that's fine. People can jump that. That's fine. That's fine. He says. I still need to learn this. I still need to learn this. And, you know, not be distracted by talking at the same time. Go. Go. Made a veil. Let's do it. So it's parallel. I think these things as well. There's a speed control cutout. Yeah, there's a speed control there. I don't know which way around it works, but technically what that does is gives you a weak field option. I think that's what it's for. Because if you, trains like the D-Stock had a weak field flag, which would be used to go faster in certain sections. And I think that's what the speed control is. It essentially gives you weak field, but I don't know how it works. That's something I'd, that'd, be, that'd be cool to know. But I know what reverse lockout does. You need to operate that to actually reverse this thing. Also got the EP brake cut out, which you don't really want to touch. Unless you want a, a real sort of a white knuckle ride as you approach the station. Because you'll uh, put this into the first sort of couple of steps of brake and it won't do anything. So that's always good fun. It's made a veil. There's also... 
there's a door interlock cutout here somewhere. A door interlock cutout. So if you did that and then tried to move the... So at the moment, if we open the doors and apply power, we wouldn't move. But if you do the door interlock cutout, you could move the train with the passenger doors open. Which is kind of cool. I don't know why you'd need it. But it can be done. So if we have a look here, yeah. So you've got the uh, drop light interlock. That's for the window. And then the door interlock. So if you uh, cut that out, you can drive the, this thing with the doors open. If you want to give people that sort of, you know, ventilation. Lots of different things there. We can already lock the doors. No hanging about here. And off we go. Next stop is Kilburn Park. Back into the darkness we go. Not too much longer until we surface. And run the uh, above ground section. Which is good fun. Approaching 30 miles an hour again. This is also the sort of route where I could sit as a passenger in it and just enjoy it from a passenger experience. So I've done that in real life many times, you know, Bakerloo line. I've done the full thing a couple of times, but it, it, it is cool. And that's something I do want to do at some point. It's Kilburn Park. Look at the gradient as we enter in here. It sort of changes through the platform. Got this. Don't want to stop that soon. Come on. There we go. Excellent. Unlock the doors. 6.30. Not bad. I think the next stop is Queen's Park. Because we've got a 15 limit coming up. And that's what's at the top of the, uh, the gradient at Queen's Park. So I think that's the next stop. Which means we're about to surface. Yep, Queen's Park. Let's go then. Get as much speed as we can for you, because we've got the climb now. The climb out to Queen's Park. Back up to ground level. Join the Watford DC line. Climbing slowly but surely. There's the exit. Once we're out of here, we can turn the cab light off because we'll uh, be able to see. Get ready to slow down here. Cab light off. On the train, the platform there, down for 15. There we are. I'll try and hold that somewhat. Got train in the south sidings as well, which is cool. Queen's Park Station, here we are. Still got the rear of our train on the gradient there. Come on! That's it. We're actually running a little bit late. It's not something I was expecting. Probably me running round to other stations, isn't it? <laughs> Having a look at Paddington and Baker Street. Oh well. I don't mind being late. Doors open. And now we can see the outside again. Hooray! Excellent. That. I love it. It's cool. Sure, you don't want to get on? I'm not that bad a driver, as I said, said earlier, but clearly some people just don't get the memo. Get the window open as well. 
There's some fresh air in here. Let's get the other one open too, whilst we're at it. Proper breeze. That's it. I hear another train moving. What? Oh, you just came in. I was about to say, what are you doing going that way? He's just coming from the south sidings. Okay. <laughs> He's going the same way I was for a second then. That's it. Up to ten. Through the Queen's Park shed here. There's a train stable in the middle two roads. Meanwhile, we go through on the outer ones. And then London Overground go past on the other side of this wall. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I say because we're now on, we're about to join network rail territory, so we will accelerate as it says on the HUD. So once the rear of the train has passed any boards, so that's all fine. Not to do there because we've got a 45 there, so we've got up to 45. We get a couple chances to get up to 45, but not many because we have to keep stopping at stations. Be nice to set up a scenario. The scenario plan is do a non-stop run. Be like, this train's needed to Elephant and Castle right now. Go, 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 and just see how long it takes. That's it. Come on, get the rear of the train through. Next stop is Kensal Green. There it is. Accelerate. Look at that thing. Love the fact they have whistles. Or whatever that one is. That just sounds like something's jammed inside the uh, the whistle, but I love the fact that these things have whistles. It's got the West Coast Main Line on our left. Climbing at the moment. So Kensal Green's just around the corner here. We are going to put our light back on because we do have another tunnel to go through. Let's put our cap light back on. So we've got, uh, yeah, put that on because we've got these tunnels here. This is Kensal Green. One thing you'll note now is our train's shorter than all the platforms, and that's because this is shared track with the Watford DC line, which is London Overground, full-size trains. So it is a step down onto the onto the Bakerloo line. That'll do. Doors open. There's another collector here. Let's get one. Just whilst I see it. Got the map. There we go. So that's the full line. In simplified form, which is cool. Alright, so let's uh, get out of here. That's it. Shut the doors. Go, 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 go. Next stop is Wilson Junction. That's it, into, the another t into another tunnel. A bit more of a conventional tunnel this time. Brick, above ground, to go underneath something. Not the whole of London, just one thing. Or two things, I don't know. It's just here. It's just here. 30 limit on the approach into Wilson Junction. Which is a very complex station. Light off. It's on a rotary switch, the cab light, so you can just go do -do 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 get like a party going on in here. But we're not going to do that because I'm sure uh, we'll get told off by someone if we do that. Down for 30. It's 30 board. We'll curve round to a Wilson Junction. Don't know what the M signifies. 
Something to do with our route, I guess. That's generally what they mean. Theatre junction indicators? That's the word that comes to mind. It's Wilson Depot. It's where all the 378s live. Or at least the Dash 2s with the pantographs. And the 710s. I'm going to go underneath the North London line. And stop here at Wilson Junction. That's it. As you notice, there's a, there's a central platform there, a terminating one. That's uh, used by some overground services, I think. These platforms are a lot longer because they're sort of built to take longer trains and just bigger trains in general. Let's have a look, shall we? Wills and Junction. Station I've been to many, many, many times. It is cool. I light here for Harleston Town Centre. Don't think I will. Gonna keep going. I mean, this train would get itself to Harrow Wheelstone, but I don't want to let it get itself there. I want to drive it. To Halston we go. We are running late. Need to not run around to different stations next time, I guess. Notice how the motor's cut out there as we went over a gap in the rail. In the fourth rail. And the lights also go out in there, I believe, which is cool, in the uh, saloon. Not really easy to show off whilst we're in here. I don't know if they'll get another gap, but they do go in and out. So underneath some track here. It's the darkness we go. And back up again. Downhill made us get quite a bit of speed there. That's the fastest we've been so far. But we do have to stop again. Another service. It's probably coming from uh, Stonebridge Park Depot. And here we are at Halston. it and bring it in there let's get the uh, doors open excellent he's off look at what the cool gang walking down here ah 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 staying alive staying alive oh, don't kill me right let's, uh, let's, let's just shut the doors I haven't watched an external departure yet. I love the ticking of the camshaft. That's so cool. It's all the resistors um, doing their thing. Which is nice. Right, here we go. Next stop, Stonebridge Park. Gonna go past Stonebridge Park Depot. I don't think we'll see anything. I think there's a building in the way, but that's where a lot of the trains are kept. Sort of the main depot for the Bakerloo line. And there's actually an, an old semaphore signal down here on the adjacent line. I mean, that's the Royal Mail terminal, which is cool. But there's, there's a semaphore signal down here, which is a nice touch. I want to catch the lights going out, though. I'm trying to have a camera there, see if we get it or not. We might not see it. Depends on the third rail. Here comes the fourth rail, I mean. There's the semaphore, which is a nice touch. See it there? I want to catch these lights. I 
don't know if it will or not. Start slowing down. Because, the, yeah, the Bakerloo line is known for its flickering light trains. Um, another 74 there. And another one. That line's got loads of them. Need to upgrade that line. Wembley Stadium over there, which is cool. Nice, uh, nice detail. Although I'm more interested in the Wembley Arena than in the stadium, because more more cool stuff happens there. Because yes, I'm not a sports person. Stonebridge Park. Ah, that'll do. Good enough. Let's see, Stonebridge Park Depot is that way. We're probably going to take a look. Oh, look at that view of the sun sunrise there. That's awesome. Let's go take a quick look. So, yeah, the main depot is here. So all the trains are kept. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. Two separate buildings there. But no time to worry about that. We have got to continue on our way. We're late enough as it is. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Doors. And we're off. Next stop won't be central. Come on. Show me the lights going out. There's a big gap in the rail here. There he goes. So the main lights go out as we go over the gap there, which is just awesome. It's a nice attention to, de a nice attention to detail because the lights flicker on these things like there's no tomorrow. So we're about to dive under the West Coast Main Line, which is good fun. downhill at the moment. Just about to see the depot there. Well, the trains are too short for us to see. So we might actually reach 45 doing this. Go, go, go. Well, I've got to slow down for 40. No. Oh well. Underneath the West Coast Main Line. And put the power on to start the climb into Wembley Central. Love this climbing curve into Wembley. It's it's awesome. It's awesome. The speed limit goes back up to 45, but we've got to stop, so I won't make that right now. It's quite an odd station. This one. It's just very. Dark and dingy. You can see the fast lines there. They look because uh, tra no trains go through, no stop at the central. They just go straight through. Um, trains only stop on the outer platforms, essentially. What for DC and Bakerloo on this side, and the slow stopping services out of uh, out of Houston on the other side. Excuse me, where do you think you're going? I hope you just want to get on the front of the train. You're not just here to cause trouble. Getting on? Good, good, good. We need to watch a full, proper departure. That's what we need to do. So we're going to, we're going to stand here and watch it depart. What doors? I've got it in forwards. I do. Nice. Oh, there's the lights going out. Lovely stuff. Next stop is North Wembley. How are we doing? 
Not too bad. Running massively late, but what can you do? What can you do? Imagine living here. Watching the trains go by. That'd be awesome. North Wembley. Is it then Kenton, South Kenton, Stonebridge Park? Maybe? Am I missing one? I don't know, I can't remember. I could have a look, but I'm not going to. Right, here we are. Welcome to North Wembley. place uh, if we can I'll take that that's good enough North Wembley easy to look around now one of the best features ever I love this I haven't shown it off properly yet will do yeah I love this so, oh, South Kenton, Kenton, of course. We're going northbound. <laughs> of course. Doors closing. Yeah, not, not much further to go. South Kenton, Kenton, and Harrow and Wheelstone. Awesome. So, because we're running late, this thing's a little bit out of sync. Because this is based on the timetable. So, if you start to run late, then you fall out of sync with it. But I'm still glad the feature is there. It can, it can only go onwards and upwards from it initially being there. And future routes having it as well, hopefully. I hope so. Now that it's a, a thing, that'd be awesome. Right, South Kenton. Station I've been to quite a few times. Because that's next to Northwick Park. Not station Northwick Park, actual Northwick Park. Or more or less. You can walk to it from there. And there's a nice uh, footbridge where I've done a lot of train spotting at Northwick Park. So it's cool to have that in here and be able to go under that. Another service there. Times well. The trains do usually pass here. So we can't be running that late. It says we are, but I choose to believe we're not. Because I've seen trains pass here. There we are. That'll do. Doors open. Oh, we're inside here. Alpha code one zero. Nice. Teal. Confused cyan. Thanks. That's great. Nice detail here. Telling you which side's northbound and which side's southbound. Get out of the way of the people. Shut the doors. The way I'm shutting the doors without bringing tab up, by the way, is I've got an Xbox controller plugged in, and the new immersion control system means that the door controls are on the D-pad. So left and right on the D-pad is open and close left and right doors on the new immersion control system. So it means that even if you're driving with a keyboard, if you've just got an Xbox controller plugged in, one, you've got free movement of cameras. So if we go out here, we've got a nice smooth motion of camera, as you can see. Much smoother than any mouse can give you. But we've also means we've got direct access to the door controls. So we don't actually, we can be outside. We don't have to bring up the tab option to open the doors. We can just do it through the controller, which is a nice touch. So that's, that's what I'm doing that with, if you're wondering. Always worth having a uh, an Xbox controller plugged in to a PC, I believe. Here's the footbridge. Done many hours of train spot in here. Watching the Bay Clue Line trains run underneath. It's good fun. Because then that line there, that's the Chilton and Metropolitan line. 
which is cool. So you get to see sort of like a two and one sort of thing from that footbridge because you can see trains going over as trains go under, which is good fun. So next stop is Kenton. There it is. Bring the speed on down. That's it. Going to pay attention here. So close to the end. Don't want to mess it up. I'll do. And for the final time, we'll watch an external departure. When's the next train due on on this side? Quite a while. There will be an expanded timetable for this. That there will be. Um, at the moment, there's 201 timetabled services, I believe. And once there's an update out for this route, it's projected to be over 400. That was mentioned in the Q&A and the update is confirmed to be on the roadmap so one day we will get um, more services for this and it will become more populated which is nice. I've got to do the external departure. Oh well. We can look at that for a view. That's just awesome. Nice touch the passengers stand inside as well because that's uh, very characteristic of the underground packed trains so you've got to stand in them I mean they'd be a lot busier than that but you know I'd rather have a frame rate than a train full of passengers alright we're nearly at Harrow and Wheelstone which is the final stop the Bakerloo line I love it I love it there's a lot of potential here for stuff to do and I'm going to do it as much as I can for you guys. It's going to be cool. Lots of services to drive. The uh, delivery designer should be good fun on this thing. And of course, the Isle of Wight will mean we've got the, the Class 483, which is essentially 1938 stock, which used to run on the Bakerloo line. So in some form or another something could be done there. So that'll be good fun. Let's slow down a little bit. As we are here, it's Harrow and Wheelstone. train terminates here. This is a service from Elephant and Castle. That's it. A bit more. Running six minutes late. Oh well. Open the doors. This train terminates here. Get out! I know you won't, but at least I said it. There's no excuse now. If you, if you stay in the train, it's your own fault. Not that it matters, because it will turn around eventually. So if we lock the doors, one more thing left to do. Because trains turn around using the centre siding, and that is what we're going to do. It's got a 10 mile an hour limit. So we're just going to take it nice and easy. This is the centre siding. What for DC line continues on either side, but this is where the Bakerloo line terminates. So just call it in here. Stop at the buffers, and that'll be us done for today. A run on the Bakerloo line completed.
And as I've spotted at Harrow plenty of times, and watching trains do this is good fun. Pulling into the siding, turning round, going back out. Nice and slow. Approach for the buffers here. And here we are. Oh, no, I haven't stopped quite close enough for it to be happy. All right, okay, fine. And here we are. There we go. Service complete. Look at that. Excellent. Stopping accuracy was pretty good. Uh, there's a couple of stations where it was like, you know, oof. But generally speaking, not too bad. Not too bad. But that has been my run on the Bakerloo line. Some other driver can take this over, get it back into Harrow and Wheelstone, and take it all the way back to Elephant and Castle and spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours driving it to and fro. We'll leave that for another day. If you missed my other Train Sim World 2 videos, feel free to go and check them out. So thank you very much for watching this one, and I will see you in the next video.